Alright sports fans, this is Sports and Knowledge once again talking about the Pitt Panthers schedule today. I hope everybody's doing well. Today is a good day, another good day to talk about some college football. We have 33 days left until that day begins on August the 27th. Last time I talked about Wake Forest. Uh, I think that Wake Forest will go third in the ACC Atlantic Division. This time I'm talking about Pitt, Panthers, and the Coastal Division. So I have a question for you guys. Can Pitt's Panthers win the ACC? Can they win nine plus games? Can they win the Coastal of the ACC? Let's find out. Pat Narduzzi will be the head coach again for the Pitt Panthers. Last year, the Pitt Panthers won 11 games. They lost three games, and they won the ACC, beating Wake Forest in the ACC championship game. They finished in the top 15 last season. You, you guys already know they had top quarterback, Kenny Pickett, and top wide receiver, Jordan Addison. But Jordan Addison will not be there anymore. He will be at USC. You know, he left He left his new quarterback, Keldon Slow, was high and dry. So he went to go play with Caleb Williams. So uh, they also had a cornerback that was drafted. His name was Damari Mathis. He was drafted by the Denver Broncos in the fourth round. And they also had a tight end, uh, Lucas Cruel. And he was one of the four main players that are not on the team anymore. So Pitt will have a pretty good drop-off, but can they regroup? Let's find out. So now we already know that the quarterback is Keaton Slovis. Keaton Slovis is a transfer from USC. Last season at USC, he threw for 2,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. He's going to have to improve that touchdown-interception ratio. But he will have a good supporting cast this season, which we'll get into that. At running back, we have Israel Abanakanda. He was the leading rusher for Pitt last season, so he will be starting tailback. And he is also a pretty good kick returner. Also, they have a running back Vincent Davis and Rodney Hammond will be involved in the rushing game as well. Both running backs had 800-yard rushing and 800-yard receiving. I started. I stated earlier about the drop-off at quarterback. They also going to have a drop-off at wide receiver. You know, losing Kenny Pickett and Jordan Addison is a big deal for a university. So... Um, Pitt will have Jared Wayne, but he will have to step it up also. He will have to step it up. Um, he had uh, five, 658 yards and six touchdowns last season. Other wideouts like Captain uh, Mumpfield and Jalen Borden will need to improve as well. Now, at tight end, they will not have a drop off. They have a pretty good tight end who would probably be top five tight end in the nation. He's 6'5 and is a matchup nightmare. His name is Gavin Barflomu. Last season, he only had 326 yards for four touchdowns, but he will be looked forward to this season. Uh, they also, Pitt will be returning a good defense and a probably top three offensive line uh, in the ACC. Uh, you got guys on the offensive line named Carter Warren, Marcus Miner, Oban Dretzel, Gabe Hoy, Jake Cradle, and they will be Kevin Keaton Slow's best friends. If I were Keaton Slow's, I would take these guys out to eat to a steak dinner every Saturday night because he's going to need these guys to produce for him so he can have an effective season. Now let's get on to the defense. At defense, last season, uh, Pitt had a top five defense. Their leader on the defensive line is Kalijah Kansi. He is a top three defensive tackle in the ACC. At defensive end, they have another monster. His name is Habakuk Bandanado. He's 6'5", 255, edge rusher. He was second all uh, ACC last year with 41 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, and nine sacks. He will be a matchup nightmare for the offensive line because he's quick off the edge. They also have other starting defense alignment like David Green, Deslin Adesandri. They also would benefit from playing this, those two top guys. Now, at linebacker, they are pretty good. They might not be as good as North Carolina linebacker or Clemson linebacker group, but they probably be third best. At linebacker, Pitt would have returning starter Sunvicio Dennis. 
who was the second in tackles for loss last year. He is a huge reason why Pitt had the best run defense in the ACC. Okay, the crazy thing was that this guy was just a two-star. With that guy at linebacker, I spent other two linebackers in Shane Simon and Solomon DeShields to follow suit. At corner, I think Pitt will have to improve at corner. They will have uh, Marquise Williams and MJ Devonshire. Um, but their strong suit would probably be at safety as far as in the secondary. I think that Brandon Hill and Eric Hallett, uh, everybody know who Brandon Hill is. Brandon Hill is a top 20 safety in college football and would definitely play on Sundays. He was all ACC. Um, so with a good front seven and a good, pretty good secondary, I expect Pitt defense to be in the top five again this year. Now let's get on into their schedule. We starting to kick it off. I know that <laughs> Gold and Blue dude would not like this. Uh, Gold and Blue, if you guys know Go Gold and Blue, he's a uh, YouTuber on um, college football. He is a West Virginia fan. I know that West Virginia has uh, JT Daniels and everything. I know that, but they, but who is he gonna throw it to? Who's gonna be the defense for West Virginia? Is what I'm asking. You know, it's gonna be. They're not a bad team. They won six games last year in the Big Twelve. However. Uh, I just don't think that uh, Pitt will lose this game, first game of the year. I think that Pitt will beat this team on September 1st, so I have Pitt winning this game. Now, the second game of the year is a very interesting game here. I have them losing to Tennessee, but it will be a good game. I think September 10th, uh, this will be a home game for Pitt. I wouldn't be surprised if Pitt give them a dog fight in this game. Uh, Tennessee will be very good. A lot of people have Tennessee finished second in the SEC East this year behind Georgia. But, you know, um, they have a dynamic quarterback in Henny Hooker. Uh, they have a dynamic wide receiver in Cedric Tillman, who would probably be a top three wide receiver in the whole SEC. So Pitt would definitely need to contain those players. Um, they did beat Tennessee last year, but they do not have uh, Pickett and Addison there anymore. So let's go on to the next game because I have Tennessee beating Pitt. So we start out the season one and one. The next game is against Western Michigan. I don't think Western Michigan can compete with these guys. This would be a win. It would be pretty easy. I think Kevin Slowis will learn from his mistakes against the Tennessee game. I think that we'll be two and one right now. Uh, the next game is Rhode Island. Uh, Rhode Island has never been able to beat a good team like this, uh, 11 the team that came off an 11 win season, I don't think that Rhode Island stand a chance against this team. I have Pitt winning this game. Uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, Georgia Tech was probably one of the worst power five teams in in college football outside of Arizona and maybe Duke. Um, Georgia Tech do have a pretty good running game, but that's all they have. And we, I told you guys earlier that Pitt is pretty good in the running game. They have a good run defense. So I think this would be a bad matchup for Georgia Tech. I have Pitt winning this game as well. Uh, the next game is another home game. So you have three home games in a row, and I got three wins for uh, Pitt against uh, Rhode Island, Georgia Tech, and Virginia Tech. The reason I have Virginia Tech losing is because Virginia Tech Defense is not that great, and their offense is not that great as well. Virginia Tech used to be good uh, maybe a few years ago um, when they had Vince Young's brother. Not Vince Young, I'm sorry. Michael Vick's brother. When they had Michael Vick's brother, they were pretty good. But, you know, that was a long time ago. I don't think Virginia Tech would stand a chance against Pitt this year. Now, I have the game for Louisville to be highlighted. It is after a bye week. But I think Pitt fans will need to watch out for this game because both of these two games versus Louisville and North Carolina are trap games. And I think they will go one and one on this on the road. Um, they have Louisville on the road and North Carolina on the road. October 22nd, October the 29th. However, I have them beating Louisville. I think that they will be able to compete with these boys. I don't think that uh, Malik Cunningham will have a terrific game like he usually will have against a good defense like this. So I have uh, Pitt winning this game. Um, let's go on to North Carolina. North Carolina is a really good team um, last year, but they lost a uh, good quarterback, NFL quarterback, and an NFL running back. I have them winning this game. Uh, I think that Josh Downs, the best wide receiver in the ACC, will have a good stat game versus Pitt defense. I think that the running backs will be 
um, better than better than ever. Um, I think that North Carolina win this game because it is an away game. However, if Pitt had this game at home, I would probably pick Pitt. Uh, therefore, it's a, it is an away game, so I have Pitt losing this game. Now, these next three games should be pretty simple, right? Yes. They play Syracuse, Virginia, and Duke before they play probably the, the two – Probably the two best teams in that division for the um, ACC Coastal Division is Pitt and Miami Hurricanes. So, um, versus Syracuse, like I said about Georgia Tech, Syracuse also have a good run game. I don't think Georgia Tech or Syracuse would have success versus Pitt run defense. So, I have Syracuse losing, so I have Pitt winning this game. Uh, the next game is versus <clears throat> Virginia. Virginia do have three legit wide receivers, and all three of them will make all ACC this year. However, that's all they got. Uh, they have a terrible defense. And so I think Pitt, will, you know, they will match up pretty good against Virginia. So I have Virginia losing to Pitt, even though it is away. The next game is against the worst team in the ACC versus Duke. If this was a basketball game, I picked Duke to blow Pitt out, but this is not, this is football. So I have Duke losing by a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if Duke lose by 21 points this game. Now here we go, the moment you all been waiting for. Miami versus Pitt. Last game of the season for Pitt. Um, this will be a big game. This game right here will determine the ACC Coastal Division. Uh, Miami will have to make a lot of improvements, a lot of changes in the offseason. They have uh, Mario Cristobal from Oregon. He's the head coach there now. He's doing a lot in the transfer portal. He's doing a lot in the recruiting. I mean, he has done a lot for the University of Miami. Miami fans are very excited about this game, and I know Pitt fans are very excited about this game. Um, I have Miami winning this game. I have Pitt losing. I would not be surprised that Pitt win this game, but I – I, I really think that this would be a good year for the Miami Hurricanes. Um, I think that Miami or Pitt could play in the ACC Championship versus either uh, North Carolina State or Clemson. But this would definitely be a good game. I would definitely watch this game from, from, from the beginning to the end. This would be a great game. This would probably be one of the best games in the whole ACC. So, who, like I said, whoever wins this game will go to the ACC Championship out of the coastal division. So I have Miami beating Pitt. So I really want to know what you guys think about this schedule. I'm predicting Pitt to go 10, I'm sorry, nine and three this year. I think they'll go nine and three. So guys, let me know what you guys think. They went 11 three last year. They had the number six recruiting class this year, number 76 recruiting class this year. So, I mean, I could see them losing to Louisville, but however, even though we're on the road, I don't think they will lose to Louisville. I can't see them losing anybody else in the ACC other than North Carolina and Miami on their schedule. And so, like I said, the Coastal Division is not as strong as the Atlantic Division. The Atlantic Division has Clemson, North Carolina State, and Wake Forest out there. And they also have Florida State. So, I think Pitt is in a good, pretty good division and they can be successful. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Be sure to hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, comment, tell your friends about the new channel. Thank you guys. Y'all have a good day.